Hi, everyone, and welcome along to our July podcast partner update. I'm Chantal Broderick, and today I'm joined by the group CEO of MyZone, Dave Wright. Welcome along, Dave. Hey, Chantal. It's great to uh, be chatting to you again. It is really great to catch up with you uh, midway through or just past the halfway mark of 2021. And today we're going to be having a bit of an update from my zone. And let's kick things off by having a chat about this little baby that I've got in my hands, the MZ Switch. Now, for anyone that isn't familiar with the Switch, and perhaps they are familiar with the MZ3, tell us what is the difference? How is it different to the MZ3? So the MZ3, Chantel, and 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 all the is uh, was a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. um, what we decided to do is um, effectively make the world's first interchangeable heart rate monitor. So it can be worn on the chest through EKG, which is the electrocardiograph, or through PPG and worn on the wrist, which is photoplasmography, where it shines a light through and uh, picks up the pulse and the blood running through your veins. So that's the main sort of like difference. It's the first world's first interchangeable heart rate monitor. So you just gave us a really interesting insight right then, because I know anyone that has been using MyZone for a while will probably automatically associate MyZone and the chest strap, right? We've used, used this for years and years. And let's be fair, MyZone wasn't always the biggest supporter of the, uh, the wrist strap. But you've just told us why now we can have this interchangeable system. So talk to us about the accuracy of that, that wrist strap. Yeah, look, we've, we've not been a fan of PPG or the, the light showing through the wrist for the pure reason that um, what happens is blood flushes through your veins um, and it distorts the reading. So 90% 90, 90 of activity done in the gym where there is a regular non-rhythmical movement of the wrist, it will give you a wrong reading. Okay, so that's that that's not changed. So so technology hasn't changed, physiology hasn't changed. Um, the one thing that we've that, that we've changed certainly since lockdown is not everyone has been training within the gym, um, and and so what we've found is that you know people have been running outside, cycling outside, um, and so. When there is a repeatable, predictable movement, PPG, as it would with you know other um, optical devices, can work. Okay, um, and and they do work. But what we decided to do was have a whole picture, so so people can actually have that choice of the different modalities of exercises that they do um, to make sure that the comfort. And and also I will add the other one is that you can now swim with it. Mm -hmm. So you can you can swim with it on the wrist because it can actually get because those people that tried to swim with it on the chest with the MZ3 they'll find that it although it's waterproof it would slip down to your ankles um, and the likes That's makes it that. hard to get your uh, your heart rate then <laughs> it does certainly does well talking about exercising outdoors so we were just I was just saying to you I'm living these days in the Sunshine Coast and. Certainly during lockdown and, and this year in particular, I have been changing up the exercise. So sometimes it's in the gym, sometimes it's outdoors. I have taken to wearing the, the wrist strap a lot because it is so convenient. I find it super comfortable when I'm running, doesn't move around. Uh, and, and accuracy wise, I always draw up my app straight away and I can see what I've done and it feels like that's what I've done. Uh, and we've got the little flashing light. I don't know if you guys can see that right now. Uh, oh, I think, I think you just saw that um, when you're turning on the MZ switch as well when you're wearing that on your wrist. So I've got to say, a uh, huge fan over here in, uh, in the Sunshine Coast, Australia. And I've been telling everyone about it. I've got my husband wearing it as well. So tell us, how, how are sales going? So, I mean, the sales are off the charts. Um, I, I think it's uh, despite the fact that we've had a 15-month a and continuing um, pandemic, um, it, it's been dare I say, for you know, a bit of a, a, a array of sunshine, so to speak, is, is something new. Look, we've, we've taken, um, it's taken us over 12, 15 months to actually develop and get, get the product right. Um, we, we started developing it back in January 2020. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we sort of like, 
you know, and it was it was a big decision for us to sort of like um, to really go and say, okay, how can we make the comfort, the convenience, the swimming? How can we make that without us losing the integrity of the accuracy of the data? And we 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 test um, and have continued to test um, chest versus wrist versus forearm versus leg, all the different um, places where you can. And the one thing that we've we found is that. Um, which is not unexpected, is that it's purely down to the modality of the exercise. If you squeeze kettlebells, if you're doing, or if you're doing a boxing session and the likes, you can't wear it on your wrist or your forearm. I mean, you, you can, but it's not going to be as accurate. And that's the same with the switch. It's the same with any device. So the, the, the hardest thing that we have, Chantel, is to try and educate the operators and also um, the end users to sort of like go, okay, understand the modality of the exercise. If you're playing tennis, I played tennis on uh, on Wednesday um, and I had it on my left wrist. So I had my switch on my left wrist um, because I know I've tested it. It doesn't go on your gripping, you know, holding the racket wrist, um, but it's more comfortable than necessarily wearing it on the chest. And it depends. If you're going for a walk with the family, or if you, you know, if you're going to go for a bike ride, um, then it, it works. Just you know, button on the chest, pressing the button, and you're away. But if you're going to get in doing a functional training session, if you're going to go in some lifts and brick, always stick with the chest. So, so you know, it's it's a um, it is a matter of education and and um, and winding up that that sort of like comfort. Um, versus the the uh, the actual the use case yeah and, the, and and as i said the comfort like for me it's definitely played played a big factor in the convenience as well so so a little while ago when i caught up with emma we had a brief chat about nz remote but i know that not everyone is going to be familiar with nz remote so do you want to talk to us a little bit about exactly what it is and what the difference is between nz remote and nz remote plus yeah. So, so when lockdown kicked in, what we realized is that a lot of people were training from home. So a lot of, a lot of people were um, exercising from home. And we've always said with MyZone is that you can use MyZone to stay connected with your members, whether they're within the four walls or outside. And we, we've, we've got data to prove that a lot of, not everyone just trains solely 100% within the four walls of the facility. It, it's, it's just human nature. Um, so what we decided to do is when, when lockdown kicked in, we were like, okay, so many people are trying to stay connected with their members. They've got a device that actually, that they can see how hard they're working. And I mean, obviously when we were all trying to work out what the best thing to do is, you know, when you're trying to do Zoom cycle classes and you say, show me your, hold up your phone and show me how hard you're working and all this. What we decided to do is we, we decided to, focus our development on creating a system so that um, it's sort of like everyone could be remote, but all their tiles appear on one screen. Um, so that therefore they, you know, the, the operator, the instructor can effectively bring everyone together um, and training together so that they can coach by color um, and see the intensities and the effort levels um, integrating that with uh, with Zoom. So we created MZ Remote, which was, and I'm going to say, I don't mind, is like a, a, a Peloton style offering for operators to be able to deliver their own um, classes to their masses, integrated with, with Zoom on a one click straight through um, and so that everyone can train together. MZ Remote Plus. So we did that and and that there is a is a service that um, operators have been using around the world. So if you want to do run clubs and all this, you can do it from the from your from your home. MZ Remote Plus. Um, when we got to the second lockout lockdown, and and we, you know, we what we realised, Chantel, was um, a lot of operators have had so much to handle themselves, um, and and so we had so many operators sort of like say. Oh, this is fantastic, but we just, you know, if we go into the facility to try and do the videoing, we get charged rent um, and we don't, 
you know, we can't, in, in the UK, we couldn't get our staff working if they were on furlough because you weren't allowed to. So they said, can you please just offer that for us? So we did. And so what we did is we did live stream classes. We've got about 700 pre-recorded classes as well. Um, and we selected 168 on the hour, every hour, um, integrated with about 40 live stream of our coaches streaming uh, um, uh, their sessions um, and being able to coach on the hour, every hour, okay? So it is a, it's like a live session um, and that there is a premium offering um, that will be charged for, but during lockdown, we've made that free because we want to help operators um, just to get through the the bloody lockdown. Um, so the MZ remote, it's rem remote plus, shall I say, um, is 168 classes, you know, so any time of the day you can jump on and you could be training with people from around the world. Um, and, and it's live, it's live training with people on the around the world with pre-recorded. And we've made it so that a in, an operator can interchange and say, oh, do you know what? Chantel takes an absolute cracking cycling class of a 5.30 of a Thursday. Let's pull out the MZ, the MyZone MZ remote pre-recorded session and then let's slot Chantel's session in there. So it, it, it effectively brings the world, um, you know, generic classes integrated with the localism of the operator as well. That's amazing. So members get to experience uh, some instructors from all across the world, some different different experiences, different uh, accents as well. Uh, that sounds incredibly exciting. So if one of our operators right now is watching this and they want to know more, I assume that they just need to reach out to their local account manager, wherever they are in the world. Is that right, Dave? Yep. That, that's right. Chita. And so like, I mean, obviously, we were just talking beforehand, Australia sort of like gone into a further lockdown. It's just a phenomenal opportunity to speak to the, the local account manager and say, can you please switch that on? So that therefore the whole, you know, that if it's locked down for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, every single one of your members has got access to classes and they can be training together, you know, do a Saturday morning killer cardio club. Well, I mean, we've had 150 to 180 people on the screen all going through the greens and yellows together. There is nothing more, nothing more engaging on a, um, a remote perspective. Um, and it's, it's now the way that we've done it as well. Mm -hmm. um, it, the way that we've, we've set it up is that the coach, see, uh, everyone can see everyone's tile. So they, everyone can see everyone's tile and it just pops up into the app where they can share it and beam it up to a TV. Um, the instructor can see the participants if they want to. So if the participant wants to turn on their camera, they can. But when they turn on their camera, the only person that can see them is the instructor. Right. Okay. So I mean, as, as we all as we all know that, you know, there's and there's different, um, you know, thoughts out on there. You know, the one thing that we had in all the research with my own gyms and, and the likes is, you know, not everyone wanted, you know, if they wanted to have a workout, they didn't want everyone seen into their lounge room. It's a bit different if you go down to the gym. But, um, you know, some people just, they're, they're like, okay, do you know what? I just rather see what Kelsey's doing. She can, you know, or if I'm doing kettlebell swings, I can turn my camera on so that she can see the form. Yep. And only her can see the form. Um, but I can see everyone's effort levels. And uh, and that there is, I, I mean, it's it's, no one in the world's ever done that um, in that degree, um, and it's it's incredibly um, it's incredibly motivating. I mean, it's it's a great way to uh, to train. I was just about to say, I imagine that that really enhances that sense of community, even though they might not necessarily be in the same physical location, but you have that that motivation and that community and that camaraderie that's associated with the effort that's going into whatever that that class or that activity is that you're doing. And, and we are just releasing in the next week. Um, so it's currently in test fight. So you might have 80 people on your screen. You can press one button and it will filter it to just your connections on the screen. Oh, um, cool. So which is, which is incredibly, uh, 
incredibly engaging to say, yeah. ah, Chantelle's on there. Oh, I'm, I'm training with my friends. Um, but, but Chantel, this is, I, I, I think as well, this is also a, a massive opportunity as a retention tool when, even if you are reopening, you know, um, so when clubs do reopen and it's, it's a, a, a value proposition out there, to sit there and say, okay, we at the facility have got, we've got our classes here and nothing is going to compete with in-club face-to-face. We, we know that and no one would say any different but this is probably the second best thing. So as a retention tool, you know, to be able to sit there and say, whether you add it onto your membership um, or as a bolt on, or you basically say, you know, you know, with us at, you know, Chantel Fitness, you've actually, you know, we've, we've got you covered um, and, you know, we're supporting you. If you want to work out at three o'clock in the morning, we've got a session for you. Um, it might be a live stream session and motivating session, or even during the time, if you want to do a, a cardio session at 5.30, you can sort of like sit there and go, hey guys, just pop up your app. And you are now training with people around the world. Um, so it's quite motivating. And that there as a value proposition, as a competitive advantage, and, uh, and also fundamentally as a, uh, retention tool, I, I think, is um, is paramount. Yeah, and I've got to say, Dave, I mean, we, we were just talking about it here in Australia. We've seen some of our states, Victoria in particular, who have gone in and out of lockdown and in and out of shutdowns. And, and what a great way this is to stay connected with those members and give them that reassurance that you're there you know, they need to continue to stay active, continue to exercise. And when the doors do reopen, come on back in. But you've rem- you've stayed connected during the, that uncertainty of, of lockdowns wherever. And I'm sure it's it's different everywhere in the world. But um, but what a great way to stay connected during those times. I think it's you, obviously the Peloton style, the beach body, you know, incredible. Nike, if you just need to look at Nike, um, training app it's just the production level that is just off the charts we 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 know that now we've got professional content in there but it's nowhere near as engaging if an operator was to just slip out the odd class with you know jake down at the gym and this is jake and jake's the one that's doing is doing the coaching so you're localizing it and it's real and and i think that's what a lot of um that's what a lot of operators have, have, um, have appreciated with the MZ Remote Plus that we've delivered for them mm-hmm. is that, you know, it's it's real. It's a it's a real instructor um, who is delivering a session, but operators, you know, they can easily either use what we've already got there or they could slot out with their own. So so you're sort of like combining, you know, the the choices. And and you know, we all know, we all know that that our members love our personalities they love you know the fact that oh that's Chantel from the club you know I, I you know I want to I want to follow Chantel from the club and that's and that's the uh the the the, the big thing with that if that yeah, makes sense absolutely I love the idea of uh, of localizing that content or, or dropping in those little gold nuggets yes. of, of your your instructors that's awesome so Dave we've kind of touched slightly on on the lockdown situation uh obviously everyone around the world's in in quite a different place at the moment um we were just talking about the uk briefly so in your opinion what do you think the main issues are that that our industry faces now in 2021 and even even post covid if i don't know if we can even say post covid because it <laughs> It doesn't feel feel too real at the moment here in Australia, but yeah, what sort of, what sort of are those main issues that you think we're facing as an industry? Look, I, I think people resource, believe it or not, mm-hmm. um, people resource is a real big struggle for the industry. Yeah. Um, certainly, I mean, what we've seen in Europe, where a lot of a lot of people have been staff have been furloughed, so they've been paid a considerable amount of money to sit at home and then continue to earn self-employed personal trainers and and the likes. I think, um, and this is the same in hospitality, it's the same in in the retail or certainly in the leisure sector is is trying to get those people back. Now, arguably, um, does it mean that there is a issue to look at the pay gap? 
does it, you know, are we as an industry paying enough? Um, and, you know, so I think, you know, that that's one thing that we, you know, we, we sort of like need to, to look at is basically saying, should we be paying more for our instructors? Um, and I know certainly a lot of the gyms that I've spoken to around the world, they're, you know, some of their rock star um, instructors have gone, hang on a minute, I, I could earn a killing from the sunshine, well, from, you know, the sunshine coast or whatever, from home, literally delivering sessions around the world. Um, and so, so I think, but, but I also think that might be a little bit short lived. Um, and I think when the world gets back to normal, people are going to need people, but I think they'll also need engaging people. And, uh, you know, before, I mean, we've always said that, you know, as an industry, um, we, we have to sort of like look at ourselves and what can we do to engage? I mean, the, an example I always use is that the 2012 Oly uh, uh, Olympics in London was the largest display of physical activity, um, sport and physical activity um, ever in the UK collectively. Yet the people that did the cheering and the welcoming were trained by McDonald's. So 75,000 McDonald's workers to welcome. And, and I, I sit there and go, why couldn't we, why couldn't we have, have an as an industry said, gone out to all the instructors around the world and say, okay, this is how you treat people. This is how you welcome people. And, and one of the big takeaways from the London 2012 Olympics was how welcome everyone felt. Mm -hmm. Yet we use McDonald's to do that because they did it right. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think as a um, as a learning experience, you know, we as an industry really need to up our game on what makes that member engagement just so much or you know much much more so to speak. Yeah. And what about if we have a look at post COVID from a my zone? perspective specifically is there anything that my zone are doing now to prepare for what comes next yeah so like like with the switch the switch has been mm -hmm. um absolutely um and the mz remote has been you know well well received what we are now absolutely deep diving into is our metrics mm -hmm. um is is so our dashboards our game mechanics so that when we get out of the, the lockdown, we can really start focusing and helping operators by basically saying, okay, Mr. Operator, did you know that if someone goes from 1500 maps a month, 15, 1500 down to 400, then 200, they're gonna cancel their membership. So if we can jump on that mm -hmm. and jump on that, you know, uh, behavior analytics and say, Now's the time to get them back in, um, to put a challenge in place, um, to really sort of like use nudge theory to, um, and also to educate the, the operators to say, hey, you've got someone here that, you know, they might be doing the same amount of swipes of their membership, but their whole physical activity um, pass passion is dropping because we can see it for you and we can present that for you, you know, because you know, my zone's whole objective is to help people feel good about exercise so that they stick to exercise. And that's the, that's the whole, um, you know, that exercise adherence, that retention is a real focus. So, so we've, we've sort of like, you know, of course we've got the sports bras and the t-shirts that integrate with the switch that you can button on and, and the likes, but our big play now that the switch is launched is really deep diving into the data and the analytics so that we can actually help increase and nudge people to stay exercising further. Well, Dave, I'm sure all of our owner and operators that are watching this today would put their hands up to get that sort of information to understand that behaviour of, of their uh, their members and what a great way to do it, to work with the team from my zone. So before we wrap things up today, are there any final messages that you want to leave with the FBP family? Well, look, um, you know, first and foremost, hey, well done for continuing um, providing that information around the world that, that you guys, you and JT do. It's, it's terrific. In regards to data, I just, I was going to touch on one point about that is that 
what we found prior to lockdown, 65 to 70 percent of all workouts were done within a facility with a my zone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are it obviously it dropped down to about 2% during the, the March of last year. We're still sitting at about 40 to 42% right. within a facility. Is that so, global? Uh, Is that global, Dave? Global. Yep. Global. Yeah. So global across the whole, you know, 84 countries mm -hmm. and, you know, 8,000 different facilities um, and millions of users, we've found that people are still not training um, back into the gym. So um, as much as they were pre-pandemic, yep, um, and that that's a that's a pretty it's a pretty deep insight in in regards to that 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 pre and post pandemic um, you know uh, training sort of like nature. Yeah, absolutely, and it's it's fascinating to be able to view that data and uh, and I guess as as we were saying with so many countries still kind of some getting back to normal but uh but so many still going in and out of lockdown and um, it's interesting to hear that that data that you've just shared with us so look it's always a pleasure to catch up i want to thank you so much for for jumping on and giving us an update uh i don't need to tell you uh i say it every time <laughs> massive fan just, just uh, my zone addict through and through. Uh, and I think I can actually say that on behalf of all of the, the uh, FVP team, I've got to say. I'm the person that uh, that will go back home, even if it's 20 minutes to turn around and get my my zone if I don't put it in my bag. So, no, uh, huge fan. No, for... no MEPS, it didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, if it, if it doesn't show up, no, it's, it didn't happen. So, no, but for all of our FVP family that are watching right now, if you have any questions, Questions about the chat that Dave and I had today. If you want to talk about the NZ switch, if you want to talk about NZ remote or remote plus, please make sure that you reach out to your account manager in your local area and have a chat about how you can work with them uh, to make sure that you're staying connected with your members and you know bring them back once once COVID moves on as much as it's going to move on. So Dave, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's great to uh, chat to you again.